Welcome back everybody. So today is going to be kind of a show and tell type of video. I'm just going to go over some products and tools that I use, things that I really like and I thought maybe I'd just share them with you. Maybe there's some things that you might find useful. So uh, with that said, I'm. this video is kind of be more, it doesn't have to be jewelry related, but I think a lot of these things kind of fall under that category. Anyways, uh, where should I start? First up is our blank cutter for sheet metal. As you can see, I've already cut a hole out, disc out rather. You just place your metal in there, figure out what size you want, take the corresponding cutter head, and then you just whack that really good with a hammer and then it'll hopefully in one blow cut out a nice clean disc. This one I kind of had to hit it a little bit and I got a burr, but it's also not the greatest uh, cutter out there. If you're looking for some quality tools, check with Pepe Tools. They have a disc cutter that has a lot more choices on sizes because you can see this has only got five. I don't know how many theirs has, but it's at least double that. So at this point you can take this, clean it up, and you could stamp it with some letters or maybe some of those like four leaf clover or heart kind of thing, drill some holes or a hole and hang it on a bracelet or a necklace and you can be done with it at that point. Or if you took your blank. And on the next tool we have here are dapping block set and we can take our blank and depending on what size this is you would want to find one that kind of fits in there nice and then take one of these you just kind of work it in there till you get it nice and round and smooth and then eventually you could end up with something like this i didn't do a great job this just is an old bottle cap so kind of give you an idea just some play around with some things and see what you come up with but and the reason that I wanted to get these two tools I had an idea for a project and I didn't really know how else to go about it so I got the two tools and this is the part that I was worried about and it turned out really cool now with this project in mind some of the other things that went along with this I had used these little there this is I mean it's tiny it's a hole saw but it's like that style of a bit and that works really nice for cutting into this rock I actually did it on another project as well and it does a nice clean job one other thing that I used on this project that I'm going to talk about here is the Mod Podge. Now this is a water-based sealer, glue, and finish. I've used this for some things in the past. On this project, uh, as you can see, the stone looks like it's still kind of wet. And that's kind of the look I was going for, like it was still in the water. But as you can see, the part that I didn't treat or brush on looks pretty dull so i didn't initially i had it i'm like man that looks kind of boring even though it's a cool piece painted the mod podge on there and just gives it that nice look of like wet stone um, another thing that i use this for that a lot of people i've seen use is they take things and they use the mod podge to glue like newspaper or i used it in uh a project for an old speaker cabinet and just basically used Mod Podge to glue old comic books onto it and then I sealed that up with some uh, I think I used polycrylic to go over the entire thing to seal everything else once the Mod Podge was dry. Going with the theme of Mod Podge we have Mod Podge Dimensional Magic. This stuff is super cool. So Hopefully you've seen the video where I made my little circuit board pendants, but I coated the surface of these and 
it just it's just a really nice finish it it's kind of self-leveling as long as everything you have is level just like when you pour resin you want it to be level but it dries clear it's fairly comparable to like the hardness of resin at least to the feel i don't know obviously if you were digging at it it probably would um, scratch or whatever but as far as something like a, a pendant or some small thing like that it certainly would be fine but you don't have to mix it you just pour it right out of the bottle it doesn't stink like resin it doesn't really have any odor of anything maybe something like uh like an elmer's glue but yeah i would check that stuff out it's really cool it works really good i don't know i'm sure you could probably find it at michael's although i ordered this off of amazon so i'll have a link for that below as well probably the thing that i use the most of when i'm working with my copper is protector clear now this stuff i've used it a lot on my like like you saw the flower there but i've also made bigger ones now this was made probably like two years ago and it's still nice and shiny when it originally started off before i sanded everything it was more like that color so obviously you know over time it tarnishes and stuff but when you seal it with this stuff it keeps it nice and vibrant it just goes on with a brush i don't know if you could spray it through like a some type of spray gun or whatever but it's just easy to use a, a brush you do have to be careful like i've noticed when i put it on i can get some like teardrop things forming on the little edges and stuff so you kind of have to go over it and keep an eye on it until it starts to uh stop dripping and after that it's fine but it does just make a really nice clear coat originally i started using um, just like a spray uh, out of rattle can clear coat and i noticed maybe a few months after making them like a flower or whatever it would start to get almost like that crackly paint look the, the clear coat was almost just it wasn't flicking off it was just cracking and then after i started using this stuff I haven't had any issues at all so i really would recommend that if you work with copper and you can also use it on um, copper brass silver stainless steel anodized aluminum aluminum and bronze and etc so pretty much oh god pretty much any uh any kind of metal that you're going to be using in jewelry making would work for that stuff and i think i have oh yeah uh jewelry related have my little texture hammer here this one's nice because the sides come off and you can put different it comes with different bits so if you wanted a different texture pattern or whatever you can just swap those out as you go i just like the uh, random texture pattern I made this little copper ring a while back and uh just does a good job it's nothing i don't think it was overly expensive but it's nice to buy like one tool that can do a bunch of different things instead of buying like five different hammers that only does one pattern you know as far as the ring goes i used some liver of sulfur uh stinky smells like rotten eggs stuff but it works on copper and silver and basically creates like a it creates a patina but it, it's more of a uh, maybe about that shade at the darkest this is just that dapping set but it gives you a dark surface and then you take something like a scotch bright pad like this ring i did it and then you go over the top of it and all the high spots get clear this was silver but as you can see it's more pewter colored now just brushed off some of the high spots and like this this was also a silver this one almost turned out like a bronze color but it just gives it a cool uh like aged look as far as hammers go again i have this other hammer i think this is actually a gunsmithing kind of hammer the ends can be replaced so you got a brass side and like that non-marring material here and it's fairly heavy but the cool thing about this one is is the end cap unscrews 
and you have a little punch. That's probably why it's more of a um, gunsmithing thing. But if you just want a nice little brass hammer, oh yeah, these are cool. I don't use these a lot, but these are certainly handy when you need something in a pinch. <laughs> I don't know what the, the proper name for these are. I want to say hemostat, but I don't know if that's true or not. I actually used this in my video where I was making the terrarium in the light bulb because I had such a small opening I needed to get down in there and place things. So these guys work really nice. Got that nice little, I think it's called an alligator hemostat. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. I have a couple different sizes. I got, like I say, I got this stuff off of Amazon. These are pretty handy when you need something in a tight area and these are perfect for that. Also, I used them when I was making my deck of cards in a jar that we can get down in there and move things around and manipulate stuff. They're kind of a, a niche tool, but they are kind of cool. And when you need something like that, they are very handy. And finally, I will close with my tried and true non-marring pliers. We have the two different styles. As you can see, they're not in English. These work really nice too. I use these for my pedal uh, folding when I start shaping stuff. It doesn't scratch. As you can see, there's no scratches or anything like that other than where I probably dropped it right there. But uh, they work really good. And like I said, they're not very expensive. I got all these on Amazon as well. Let me know if there's anything here that interests you. If you want me to kind of go over something else more or maybe uh, some products that you use that you would recommend, I would also like to hear about that stuff. I do have some other things I would like to share, some tools and stuff, shop related things, but it's not really, relative to this type of tool set, I guess. So I might do a different video for that. And for now, I think I'm gonna call it a, call it a day. So uh, I will talk to you guys later and thanks for watching. See you later.